Hello people, welcome. Let us start off with bioavailability <coughs> uh, topic. Bioavailability also very important for exam. So first of all, what is bioavailability? It is the availability, obviously how much of the drug, the fraction of the drug that is available for final action, correct? So it is the fraction of the administered dose of the drug that reaches the systemic circulation in unchanged form. In unchanged form. Okay, fraction, unchanged. These two ta uh, keywords you should know. Then, in IV, 100% bioavailability. Why? Because you are directly injecting into the vein, into the systemic circulation. You yourself are injecting. In oral uh, route of drug administration, the first pass metabolism will be there because of which uh, there will be less bioavailability. Okay, first pass metabolism, do you know? It has to go through the stomach, digestion, get absorbed, then it will go to liver where it will get metabolized. There the metabolism will be conjugation etc. And most of the drug will be metabolized and nullified by the body. Only a little fraction possibly can reach the systemic circulation in unchanged form. And it, that is the drug that can show its action. Okay. So this bioavailability you can draw this graph also. This is the time as easy as that. X axis is the time. And this is the concentration of the drug. Plasma concentration of the drug. So you can see here something like A. It has been given and it has reached a very good plasma concentration. So there is something called as a therapeutic concentration that is required for the drug to work. If uh, uh, basically if you give less than that then there is no action. All these are less. They are not even reaching the therapeutic concentration. A is reaching the therapeutic concentration. Okay, it's um, plasma concentration is increasing and then it is decreasing. So this is basically a plasma concentration time curve. Okay. Here the, what they are telling is they have given the same drug, same amount in different preparations. Okay. And preparation A seems to have a good plasma concentration. Okay. Bioavailability is more for A. The bioavailability for the other two are not even reaching therapeutic concentration. Just throw this diagram if you didn't understand much. Leave it, no issue. Now think like a normal human being. What will affect the bioavailability? Bioavailability, what and all can affect of the drug? Yes, whether you gave IV or oral. So definitely root of drug administration will decide the bioavailability. What else? Okay, see <clears throat> there is something called as pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. This you should know. Now what is pharmacokinetics? Pharmacokinetics is the, what the body does to the drug. What does the body do to the drug? Digest, absorb, metabolize in the liver. There are some enzymes in our body which can metabolize the drug. Okay. So uh, then after all this, the metabolites that are formed after the metabolism, the metabolites which are formed are will be eliminated. Usually in urine they will get eliminated. Now this elimination can be dose dependent elimination like in phenytoin or it could be a Hoffman's elimination, sorry, like atracurium. Atracurium is a skeletal muscle relaxant by the way. So the drug gets eliminated from the body. So all this is what the body is trying to do to the drug. Okay. So all this affects bioavailability, correct? Then plasma protein binding. So some of the, uh, finally this drug it reaches the plasma, right? So what happens when it reaches the systemic circulation, there also it will go and bind to the plasma proteins like albumin, etc. So this plasma protein binding also affects the bioavailability because the drugs that are bound to the plasma protein, they are not available for action. Once there is uh, the free drug is there, the free drug concentration, it becomes low. The drug that was bound to the, to the plasma protein gets released and then the uh, concentration of the drug in the plasma continues. Did it, is this clear or is going over your head? Hello. Everything is fine. You understood what plasma protein binding is, right? So if the drug is bound to the plasma protein, it's not available for use. So then the plasma protein, once the levels of the drug goes below some level, the plasma protein bound drug will get released and then there will be more action or availability of the drug. So plasma protein binding, which are all drugs will have more plasma protein binding, you know, benzodiazepines, warfarin, Okay, the benzodiazepines and warfarin have high plasma protein binding. Okay, then drug interactions. In drug interactions, you can know 
these um, phenytoin and aspirin, right? So what these do, they will displace warfarin from the protein binding site. You understood, right? So warfarin concentration becomes more in the blood and hence there can be bleeding tendency. Anticoagulation property of warfarin becomes more because it is going to be displaced by aspirin and phenytoin. So you should know this guys. So warfarin bioavailability becomes more if you are giving it along with aspirin and phenytoin. Okay. Let's move on guys. T half. T half basically is like you already know about it from chemistry and all that physics also. Radioactivity T half. You've heard right. Similarly here uh, you give some drug and it is bioavailable. Okay. Now the plasma concentration after how many hours it becomes half the plasma concentration. Okay. So the plasma concentration to reduce by 50% that much time is called as T half. So if something has a, a long T half that means it is long acting drug. If it has a short T half it is short acting drug. So even that affects the bioavailability of the drug. Some more points here guys. So what and all affect the bioavailability? Wait. You know the drug's properties itself affects its bioavailability like the form you're giving in solid, liquid, gas that can affect the solubility of this drug. That matters a lot. Okay. Then <clears throat> the pH of the drug. Okay. See ketoconazole it needs acidic pH. So in the stomach only it will get uh, you know absorbed. So ketoconazole you can know that. Particle size matters. So that's why what do they do? No? In capsules they will put particles which are small and big. The small ones they get dissolved fast and they will be available. After some time the big one will start dissolving, dissolving, dissolving and the bioavailability will keep up. So those are some tricks that they do. Okay, Particle size also matters. The area of the absorbing surface. So if the area is more then obviously the drug is absorbed more. Vascularity. Vascularity can play uh, both the types of role. It's more vascular then it is more systemically available. And vascularity plays a role even in local anesthetic. If you give a vasoconstrictor like adrenaline, it will make sure that the drug is not absorbed systemically. So it will be available more locally. Did you understand what was told? Just now what we told you understood. See local anesthetic when they give, they will give adrenaline there with the local anesthetic. So that the, there is vasoconstriction. So this local anesthetic won't get absorbed into the systemic circulation and it will be available locally in that area. <clears throat> okay. So obviously vascularity plays a role in bioavailability of the drug. Drug interactions we already told you like phenytoin and aspirin they will displace warfarin and warfarin concentration will become more and there can be bleeding tendencies. So these drug interactions also matter for bioavailability. Disease states <clears throat> some people know if they have kidney failure or liver problem, what will happen? They will not be able to remove the drug from the body and the drug toxicity can increase. So going from bioavailability, it became toxicity level. Should be careful about disease states. Route of ad uh, administration like, um, like we already told you, IV means 100% bioavailability, oral is less because of first pass metabolism. Food presence also affects the bioavailability like um, <clears throat> Nelfinavir, which is a HIV drug, should be taken after food. HIV drug. Hmm? It should be taken after food. Pregnancy also affects the bioavailability. You can add a lot of things here, I am sure. Uh, maybe you can read the textbooks, other textbooks and write some more factors here. We don't want to write things which are not there in the textbook we are reading and then change it. A lot of things come to our mind like age etc but it's not mentioned. So let us cover another term here bioavailability versus bioequivalence. See what is bioavailability you know. Fraction of the drug administered dose of the drug. Fraction of the administered dose of the drug which is available in systemic circulation in unchanged form. That is bioavailability. But bioequivalence is nothing but if two manufacturers are there, they have made two tablets, two different types of drugs are there from manufacturer A and from manufacturer B. Same drug, they have made two tablets, okay, two different tablets. 
If the bioavailability of both are same, then both these drugs are said to be bioequivalent. That's all. Okay, let's move on now. One more term if you want you can know. See pharmacokinetics we told you affects the bioavailability. What is pharmacodynamics? This term if you want you can learn. Pharmacodynamics is actually what the drug does to the body. So once it is available, bioavailable is, bioavailability is there. What does the drug do to the body? That comes in pharmacodynamics. Okay, Like a mechanism of action, pharmacological actions of the drug on the central nervous system, on the cardiovascular system, on other organs, on other parts of the bodies, all the parts of the bodies, everything comes in pharmacodynamics. Very good. So let us close this video on bioavailability. If you have any doubt, please leave in the comments. Uh, all the best for exam. Bye-bye. Sorry, sorry, I forgot. One more point is there, guys. Uh, redistribution. Redistribution also affects bioavailability. What exactly is redistribution? Lipid-soluble drugs are there. No, they are uh, initially what will happen, they will directly go off to brain, heart, kidney, etc. Okay. Then what happens, once the... Uh, level plasma concentration level decreases they will get they will come back to blood okay that is why you know when you give diazepam or theopentone though they have long acting uh, duration of long action they have action is long acting what am i saying <laughs> okay they will become short acting due to redistribution so then you will have to <clears throat> repeatedly continuously give the drug over long periods so that you can maintain the level of the drug okay to make it long acting you'll have to continuously give because of this redistribution and what are the examples diazepam and theopentone any other doubts you have shall we wind up bye bye